So I've no idea how many of you are in the room because these lights are a bit bright, but it sounds like there's quite a few of you. Um, first of all, apologies if you did expect to see Tar Dunbar up here talking about um, React and JavaScript and stuff. Unfortunately, he's stuck in the US and he couldn't make it, but um, hopefully um, there'll be some stuff in my talk that you'll find interesting. So uh, let's take it away. So. Uh, I am uh, John Blackburn. I'm one of the WordPress core developers. I've been working with WordPress for something like 12 years now. It sounds like quite a long time in web development uh, terms. I'm a senior engineer at HumanMade, which is one of the uh, WordPress.com VIP partner agencies. Uh, work over in the UK. If you want to follow me on Twitter or GitHub or WordPress.org or whatever, you can do that at John Billion, and I'll tweet my slides out and uh, answer any questions that you've got afterwards. So I'm going to start by giving some background on the user roles and capabilities API in WordPress. And then a little later on in my talk, I'll go into some good technical detail about uh, what you can do with the API. So most of you are probably aware of the default roles in WordPress. We've got the administrator role, uh, editors, authors, contributors, and subscribers. But there are actually two kind of pseudo roles as well in WordPress that uh, a user can have. And the first is a uh, super admin. So if you're running WordPress multi-site, um, a user can be a super administrator. And this means the user can do anything on any site right across the network. Uh, but the important thing to remember here is that a super admin is not actually a role. It's a flag that gets set in the uh, user meta against the user account. So when a user is a super administrator, they actually uh, bypass all of the usual roles and capabilities checks in WordPress because a super admin can do everything. And a user can actually have no role in WordPress, even though the user account still exists. This sounds like something that might not be very useful, but it can be useful, for example, when you need to remove a user from the site without actually deleting their uh, user account. So in the uh, admin area here in WordPress, uh, when you're editing a user, the little drop down to control a user's role has an option at the bottom to select no role for this site. Uh, although they may seem it, roles in WordPress aren't actually hierarchical from a technical point of view. So this is the uh, roles and capabilities page from the WordPress codex. The default roles in WordPress kind of are hierarchical, but purely from a technical point of view, they aren't actually hierarchical. And let's find out why that's the case. If we think about roles, capabilities, and responsibilities, for example, what are the responsibilities of each role in WordPress, we can start to see how the API isn't hierarchical. So what are the responsibilities of the roles in WordPress? Well, the responsibility of an administrator is to administer the site. They can do pretty much anything on the site. Uh, an editor, well, their responsibility is to edit all of the content on the site. Uh, an author, their responsibility is to edit just their own content because an author can't edit other users' content. A uh, contributor, their responsibility is to contribute proposals. They can't publish content live to the website. And a subscriber, well, a subscriber doesn't really have any responsibilities. They just exist. Now, in WordPress, a user can actually have more than one role at the same time. It doesn't actually make much sense with the default roles. For example, uh, if a user had the role of both an editor and an author, it wouldn't make any sense because the capabilities of an author are just a subset of the capabilities of an editor. But if we start to think about custom roles that a plugin might provide, we might be able to see how having more than one role at the same time makes sense. So these two roles here, a comment moderator and an employee manager, uh, they have two very distinct responsibilities. A comment moderator's responsibilities uh, are to moderate comments, and an employee manager, or maybe their responsibility is just to manage all of the users on the site. So you can see how it would make sense for a user to have both of these roles at the same time, because they are very distinct responsibilities. Uh, so let's take a look at this in a real-world plugin. 
Uh, BB Press is a popular uh, plugin for WordPress for providing forums functionality. It actually, provide, uh, actually uh, powers the support forums on WordPress.org. Uh, and BB Press provides some custom roles specifically for the forums. We've got a key master. Their responsibility is uh, for managing the forums as a whole, kind of like an administrator's responsibility is to manage the website as a whole. Uh, moderator, well, their responsibility is to moderate all of the discussion on the forums. Uh, participant, well, this is a role given to users who are participating in discussion on the forums. And a spectator doesn't really have any responsibilities. This is just a role that's given to users who follow the topic without actually participating in it. So with BB Press installed on our site, we could see how it would make sense for a user to be both an author and a forum moderator at the same time, because as I've said, they're very distinct roles with distinct responsibilities. And uh, BB Press provides a nice user interface for, uh, for this in WordPress. Uh, when you're editing a user, you can select the role of the user on the site as a whole. For example, here, the user has got a role of author. And then their forum role is a moderator. But this is just uh, a better user interface to the fact that the user has two roles on the site at the same time. There's a, a really nice plugin by Justin Tadlock called Members, which provides the same functionality. It changes that drop down into a list of checkboxes so you can check multiple roles for users. And here we've got a user who is both an author and an events manager, because again, those roles, those roles provide very distinct responsibilities. So if we bear this in mind, roles, capabilities, and responsibilities, uh, we can get a really good understanding of how powerful the Roles and Capabilities API is in uh, WordPress. So let's look at capabilities. Well, the capabilities determine whether or not a user can perform a given function. And most of the time, we use it with the current user can function. For example, current user can edit posts, manage options, upload files. Uh, there's a sister function to this called user can, and it takes a user ID. So if you need to check the capabilities of a user who isn't the current logged in user, you can do that by passing the user ID to the user can function. Please don't do this. As I've just uh, talked about, respect, uh, distinct responsibilities for a role make the whole roles and capabilities the API really powerful. If you start checking for users' roles instead of their capabilities, the whole kind of system uh, breaks down. You should instead check for distinct capabilities. The reason, or one of the reasons for this, is that if you're using WordPress multi-site and a user is a super administrator, super admin can do anything on any site on the network, they might not actually have the role of administrator on all of the individual sites on the network. So this just falls down. So don't do this. Um, I think actually in WordPress 4.8, we managed to put in a doing it wrong notice if you now check for a role instead of a capability. So if you see that warning coming up in your code from WordPress 4.8, you'll know that's the reason. So switch over to doing capability checks instead. Uh, back in the day, back in uh, up to WordPress 2.0, I think, WordPress didn't really have a powerful roles and capabilities API. It just used user levels, so a user was you know, level one, level five, level 10, whatever. If you're still using these levels in your code, you're doing it very, very wrong, and you're years and years out of date, and you'll see some doing it wrong notices there as well. So if you do see these levels, it's a very old system. But of course, because WordPress is uh, so committed to backwards compatibility, this still actually um, does work, even in WordPress 4.8. So. How does the capability system in WordPress work? Well, in this example here, edit post is not actually a capability that any user or any user role in WordPress will have. The singular form of edit post doesn't exist. So what is this? Well, this is a meta capability. 
And WordPress maps meta capabilities to the primitive capabilities that a user actually has based on the context. And in this case, the context is the post ID. Uh, the function that handles this is called map meta cap. It handles mapping of meta capabilities such as edit post and the post ID to the primitive capabilities that are actually required of the user in order to be able to perform the action. In, uh, in this case, edit others' posts if you're trying to edit the post that belongs to another user. So let's take a look and see how this works. Uh, here we are calling current user can edit post on a particular post ID. The first thing that map metacap does is to check to see whether the post even exists. If it doesn't, what map metacap does is it adds do not allow to the array of required capabilities to perform that action. Now, do not allow is a very special capability that no user in WordPress can have. So by adding this to the array of required capabilities to perform that action, it prevents the user from being able to perform the action. Because it doesn't make sense that if a post doesn't exist, that a user would be able to edit it or delete it or publish it. A little further down, Map Metacap will check to see if the current user is the author of the post. And if the post is published, then one of the required capabilities to edit that post is edit published posts. Uh, if the post isn't published, then the required capability becomes edit posts, for example, for draft posts or scheduled posts. However, if the user is not the author of the post, then the required capabilities are a little bit different. For example, if you're trying to edit someone else's post, you need the edit others posts capability. Now, where this surfaces itself in WordPress is that editors and, and administrators can edit the posts that belong to other users, but lower level roles such as authors and contributors can't edit other users' posts, even though they can edit their own. So this is where Map Metacap maps those capabilities. Uh, in addition to that, then we uh, require the edit published posts capability if the post is published. And if it's private, edit private posts. So current user can edit post post ID. If we are trying to edit another user's published posts, and the actual required capabilities become edit published posts and edit others' posts. Whereas if we're just trying to edit, for example, our own draft post, then the only capability that's required is edit posts. So from that one single meta capability called edit post, map metacap maps all of the required primitive capabilities for that context, for that post ID. Um, Map Metacap doesn't handle just posts, of course. It handles all of the capability checks. So here we're going to do a capability check for delete user and a user ID. Um, the only check that's done here is a multi-site related check. So for example, on multi-site, a regular administrator can't delete a user. So here we'll do a check for his multi-site. And if the user isn't a super admin, then we'll block this uh, ability to delete the user by adding do not allow to the array of required capabilities. If we're not using multi-site or the user is a super admin, then we just require the delete users capability. And by default in WordPress, that is assigned to just administrators. So map metacap is a really powerful function. It's kind of a gatekeeper to roles and capabilities in WordPress. It handles the mapping of meta capabilities to primitive capabilities. But the most interesting part of this function is the very last line. There's a filter at the end of this function called map meta cap. This opens up a whole world of possibilities. Probably, actually, this filter is probably the most powerful filter in WordPress because it allows you to completely change the way that uh, users can perform actions in WordPress, and uh, we'll take an example. We'll take a look at some examples in a moment. So this filter 
uh, includes, uh, the first parameter includes a list of the capabilities that are required to perform the current capability check. Uh, the meta capability that was passed in, such as edit post, it passes in the current user ID, and it passes in uh, any context that you've provided, and in this case, it would be the post ID. So let's see what we can do with this. Well, here I've added a callback to the map metacap filter. The required capabilities for this check get passed in as a first parameter. And what we're doing here is we're checking to see if a delete term is the current capability check. And if it is, we can do something, for example, like preventing a user from deleting a protected term. So if we had a plugin that added a protected flag to the term meta, all we need to do is add do not allow to the list of required capabilities for this action. And this prevents the current user from being able to delete the term that we're trying to delete. And we need to remember to return the required caps at the end of this function. Otherwise, we'll accidentally allow every user to do everything on the whole of the network. So that's an important line. So with these uh, few lines of code, we don't need to deal with hiding delete links in the admin area. We don't need to override form handlers or AJAX handlers or anything like that. Because throughout WordPress, the current user can checks are used at multiple stages to make sure a user can do the action they're trying to do. So this is all we need to do to prevent a user from being able to delete a given term. Just five lines of code. A really powerful filter. Uh, let's introduce some lady luck into the admin area. Here we've got uh, a function that rolls a virtual dice. If the dice lands on three, then the user is allowed to publish a post. If it doesn't, sorry, you're out of luck. You need to uh, try and roll that dice again to see if you can publish the post. The important thing to note here as well is if the dice does land on three, then there's no special handling needed. It just falls back to returning the required capabilities, and the user can publish it just as normal. The um, map meta cap filter, though, it can be used to grant capabilities as well as taking them away. All of the examples I've given so far, we've just added the do not allow capability into the list of required capabilities. Here, what we're doing is allowing uh, users to upload files. So a contributor. Uh, role in WordPress, a user with a role of contributor, although they can submit posts, they can't actually upload files into that, so they can't add images and things to a post. But we can enable this quite easily with the map meta cap filter. Um, so we'll check to see if upload files is the current capability check. And if it is, what we'll do is we'll override the complete array of required capabilities, and we'll just replace it with an array containing edit posts. What this means is any user who has the edit posts capability is now able to upload files, whether that is a, a contributor or a custom role, doesn't matter. And again, just three, four lines of code in there. So that's the map meta cap filter. As I said, probably the most powerful filter in WordPress. You use this filter to alter the required primitive capabilities for a capability check. There's also another filter called uh, user has cap. It's, it's equally as powerful. And what this filter does is this allows you to control the actual capabilities that a user has at runtime. Um, it gets passed in the array of capabilities that the user has, an array of the capabilities that are required for the current check, and any arguments, which is the context, such as the post ID. So let's see what we can do with this. Uh, this is some code from a plugin of mine called User Switching. It's a plugin which allows you to immediately switch between different user accounts in WordPress. And in this plugin, I have a capability called Switch to User. Um, it looks like a regular capability in WordPress, but I've got handling in this uh, current in this user has cap filter here, which maps the switch to user capability to another capability. So for example, here, we're checking to see if switch to user is the capability that's being checked. If it is, we'll grant the switch to user capability 
based on whether the user can edit the user they're trying to switch to. So in user switching, you can only switch to a user if you can edit that user. So we'll just map those capabilities with one another. Uh, in addition, as well, you can't switch to your own user account. So there's just some logic in here to check for that. And then we will return the user caps array at the end of this function. So again, not a lot of code to fundamentally change the way that the capabilities system in WordPress is used. It's important to remember that even if you don't understand this particular example, these filters are very powerful, and they allow you to do quite a lot with not a lot of code. So the map meta cap filter allows you to alter the required capabilities for a given capability check. And, has, and user has cap allows you to filter the actual capabilities that a user has in order to perform a given check. So as a recap, then, we've covered roles and responsibilities of the roles. We've covered the capabilities and the way that you can alter those capabilities in WordPress. We've covered the map meta cap filter and the user has cap filter. And I'm going to wrap up with some trivia about the roles and capabilities API. So uh, non-logged in users. Current user can do something. This works for all logged in users if they've got the do capability. But we've got a special capability here called exist. The difference with exist is that any user can exist even if they're not logged in. Now, if you go and look inside the current user can function, it looks like there's some code in there that prevents a user from being able to exist if they don't log in. However, it doesn't actually work, and it hasn't worked for the whole 12 years that that code has, has been in place. Uh, this introduces some interest in functionality. Um, BuddyPress, uh, the BuddyPress plugin, actually makes use of this um, in a bit of a roundabout way to determine whether a user is logged in. So the only reason I'm mentioning this is, is in case you end up building some custom front-end functionality on your site and you're checking current user can exist, you also need to ensure that the user is logged in with is user logged in. Otherwise, you'll get some false positives. And if you go digging around in the code, you'll uh, understand why it doesn't work. Uh, there's a bit of a push at the moment in WordPress to introduce more granular capabilities. So for example, here we've got these meta capabilities called edit user. You pass the user ID, delete post, where you pass the post ID. But you can't currently do this for things such as themes, plugins, and sites. The, the capabilities are more generic. You know, they edit themes, activate plugins, deactivate plugins. So hopefully, in a uh, future version of WordPress, we'll have more granular capabilities. So you'll be able to control whether or not a user can activate or deactivate individual plugins based on the plugin name or whether they can archive or delete or restore sites on a network based on the site ID. Um, so all of this is, uh, is ongoing. And we managed to introduce more granular capabilities for uh, taxonomy terms back in WordPress 4.7. And this is an ongoing push to do that a bit further. Uh, also, for widgets and sidebars and menus and comments and all of that, hopefully, we'll get some much more granular control in place. If you want to uh, understand exactly what capabilities every role in WordPress has, you can go to the roles and capabilities page on the codex. But if you really, really want to understand it, there's actually a class in the WordPress test suite called Tests User Capabilities. And this, for every single capability in WordPress, it lists all of the roles that can do that capability. Um, it also means that as we make changes to WordPress core itself, we can be assured that we don't accidentally introduce the ability for a role to perform an action that they shouldn't be able to perform. So if you're interested in uh, all of the capabilities that a role can perform, go and take a look at this class called Tests User Capabilities, and it's all mapped out there for you. I'm a little bit ahead of time, so that's it from me. Are there any questions?
questions? Yeah, we've got someone coming here. Hi, Martin. Hey. Hello, John. I enjoyed your presentation. Could you please go back to the slide with current user can do and something? Yeah. Yeah, my question about that is that if you recommend not relying on the last function which is there, which is just is user logged in, because I use that one in some cases, so should I instead use the current user can? Um, so ideally, if you just need to know that a user is logged in and you don't care about their capabilities, yeah. then you can just use uh, is user logged in. Uh, the point really is, is um, if you were to go and look inside the current user can function, you'll see this exist right there as one of the kind of first lines of code. So you might think, oh, I can use that instead of using is lo user logged in, but it doesn't quite work as you would expect. Um, as I mentioned, BuddyPress has got some strange behavior around actually utilizing the exist capability. Um, so yeah, if you don't care about the capabilities of the user, you just need to know that they're logged in or not. You can just use is user logged in and just forget about the exist thing altogether. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's enough for me. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. So, Hi, John. Hey. Hi, John. Uh, I'm Slava from Ukraine, and I have actually two questions. One of them is small, and the other one might be not very small. So uh, regarding the uh, capabilities and meta capabilities, uh, why are they so complicated which, when we have uh, a real capability and not real capability, which is then mapped uh, further? Is it done uh, on purpose or is it just a legacy from the ten, more than 10 years <laughs> work of development? Yeah, it's just done on purpose to confuse everyone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that explains let's, a lot. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I've got a good example here. So, um, so let's uh, let's take a look at a better example. Um, Getting lost in my slides here. Oh, never mind. I'll talk anyway. Um, so, so imagine a situation where you have um, you have a post and you're trying to determine whether a user can edit that post or not. If we didn't have meta capabilities, um, you would actually have to perform a bunch of checks at that time. So you would have to know whether the post is published. You would have to know whether the post is uh, private. You would have to know whether the current user is the author of the post. Um, you have to know whether the current user has the ability to edit published posts, whether the user has the ability to edit other users' posts, whether they have the ability to edit private posts. So the idea of the meta capabilities is it abstracts all the way that complexity to you. So all you need to do is call current user can edit post and all of the complexity around whether it's published or the, whether the user has ability to edit published posts or other users' posts, it's kind of handled behind the scenes for you. So um, if we didn't have meta capabilities, you would, you would have to kind of account for that every single time you were trying to determine whether a user could edit a post. And it would also mean that um, maybe some point down the road where WordPress introduces a whole kind of new concept to posts, maybe a new post status, for example, we can introduce that and hide away all that complexity in map meta cap, and you still only need to use the edit post capability. You don't need to kind of concern yourself with all of the uh, underlying capabilities of users. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. And the other one, smallish one, is regarding the splitting some capabilities into several ones. Because, for example, for taxonomies, we have managed taxonomy, managed term capability, but there is no one uh, create term, uh, edit term. They, they exist edit term, but no create term. So, for example, it's not very easy to allow editing and deleting, but do not allow creating. Yep. So is it possible and when it will be implemented? Yeah, you're exactly right. So we've got, we've got capabilities for edit term, delete term, uh, assign term, but we don't have 
uh, the create term capability currently. There is a ticket open on uh, WordPress track to introduce create term capability. That's I who created that ticket. Right. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'd love to get that in, and, and that kind of falls under the umbrella of, of um, making all of the terms much more granular. So, if it's not in the 4.9 milestone, then I'll go and move it in, and hopefully we can, we can get that in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, chap here. Hi, my name is Jeffrey from the Netherlands. Um, I was wondering, let's say there's a plugin in your WP admin that gives users access to a certain page. Um, that has a hard-coded user can manage options check. Is there any possi possibility to grant a user with or without your f the fields that you just mentioned to grant users access to that page without actually granting them the manage options? Uh, um, yes, but it, it would um, potentially have some sort of unexpected side effects, I guess. Um, So we can see here where we're, um, we've got the map meta cap filter and all of the kind of context is passed in. Um, what we're doing here, like for, for example, for the delete term capability, up here we're adding the do not allow capability. What you could do is um, you could do a check and look to see if um, manage options is the current capability that's being checked and also add some additional check there. For example, are we looking at the current page that the user that, you, that you're uh, talking about? Maybe you look at the page ID or the slug or, or whatever. And then you could actually grant the manage options capability here by um, passing in something such as edit post. And what that would mean that at that particular call to current user can manage options on that particular page, you are actually granting the manage options capability to a user who can edit posts, for example. So that would, that would kind of work, but you also need to bear in mind that for, the, um, for that page load, the user has got the manage options capability effectively. So you might see um, some side effects, you know, there might be some uh, edit links or links to setting screens or whatever. So ideally, that particular plugin would use a custom capability, such as my example there with switch to user, and it would map switch to user to manage options, and it would allow you to override it much more easily. You know, you've got a much more granular kind of capability check there. So if that's not one of your plugins, like if that's a third party plugin, you could probably maybe go to the plugin author and recommend that they use a custom capability there and map it using the uh, map meta cap filter. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, over here? Yes. Hey. Hi, my name is Lawrence from uh, Holland. Oh, please um, step forward to the mic a bit. This, this much? Yep. Okay. My name is Lawrence from Holland, and I'm thanking you for your talk. Uh, you showed that um, it's possible to grant upload files capability by, for example, doing edit posts. Um, there has been a discussion by some developers. I think there's a ticket for it to grant uh, or to create the uh, edit attachments um, capability because that doesn't exist yet. Its attachments are currently considered posts, yep. not um, objects on their own. Um, would you suggest developers that want to um, distinguish posts from attachments to check the post type in? such filters or is there any time um, coming an end to that discussion and will be integrated in uh, core? Yeah, so um, as you pointed out, um, so this is kind of some code, pseudo code from the map meta cap function. It looks at, like if the post exists, but as you said, it, if you're trying to edit an attachment, it uh, there's there's no uh, distinct capability like edit attachments or publish attachments or whatever. Um, if you need, to, like if you need to uh, restrict the ability for users to edit attachments and disconnect that from posts, you could use the uh, map meta cap filters and, as you said, look at the post type and then do whatever logic you need to do to determine whether a user should, should be able to edit attachments or not. 
Um, I think maybe a precursor to that, to, a precursor to having that in core is um, the attachments status API. Um, so in, a, in WordPress core, an attachment doesn't have a status. You know, we haven't got draft and published and, and things like that. An attachment either exists or it doesn't. If we introduce a status API to attachments, then we can start to put in some real fine-grained controls for whether a user should be able to create, edit, delete, publish attachments uh, based on its status. But yeah, for now, if you need to uh, uh, restrict the ability for a user to you know, mess with attachments, you can look at the post type, and it will be attachment. And then you can do any logic you need to do there. and return do not allow or any other capability that you think is appropriate. OK, thank you. OK. Oh, last minute question. Sorry, John, <laughs> one yep. more question. Yep. Uh, because uh, you showed several, uh, two at least, uh, the hard-coded capabilities that uh, do not allow and exist. Uh, the, the question is actually, are they or written somewhere in the codex or handbook, and if not, which are, which are those capabilities which are, we, which are hard-coded uh, exist, that does exist? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, off the top of my head, they are the only two kind of special capabilities. Um, exist, uh, so in the map meta cap function, when you get right down to the bottom of the function and the filter has already run, after that filter, that's where the exist capability is handled. So it, all users will always be able to exist. The do not allow, coincidentally, wasn't enforced until contributor day on Thursday when I added some code in which does ensure that a user cannot ever have the do not allow capability. Um, so those are the only two uh, off the top of my head that are kind of special case capabilities. Uh, whether or not they're documented anywhere, good question. Um, they should be on the codex page for roles and capabilities. If they're not, then uh, maybe someone can go in and add, add them there. OK, thank you. Hopefully, thank you. this will be done by someone. <laughs> yeah, someone, not me. <laughs> Everyone with a WordPress.org account can uh, modify codex pages. So exactly. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. OK, any more questions? I don't see any more questions. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Give him a big applause.